Nigeria's foreign reserves gained $70 million in one week as the Central Bank of Nigeria begins weekly dollar sale. COVID-19, federal government to inject 600 million naira into agriculture to mitigate the effect. Oil prices set for fifth consecutive weekly gain as stocks steady across the globe. This is Business Express reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Latest figures from the Central Bank of Nigeria have shown that the country's foreign reserves rose by $70 million from $35.59 billion as of August 20 to $35.66 billion on August 27. The reserves had earlier dropped by $278.91 million from $35.87 billion on July 29 to $35.59 billion on August 19. The Apex Bank had said during the last Monetary Policy Committee meeting that the country's exchange rate was still being affected by volatility in crude oil prices. The federal government is set to inject over 600 billion naira as stimulus response into the agriculture sector. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Sabo Nununu, made the disclosure at the weekend. In a statement, Nununu said the stimulus package would target small-scale farmers to ensure food security and sustainability. The package is expected to begin with the initial 2.4 million farmers across the country. Analysts have noted that the virus bug has beaten down hard on foreign capital inflows in quota to 2020, leaving the domestic money and capital markets in awkward situations. The most recent report released by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, shows that capital importation declined by 77.88% quota on quota in quota 2 2020, and by 78.6% year on year. The decline in capital importation inflows was evident as the Nigerian economy shrunk by 6.1% in quota 2 2020. A drop was recorded in direct foreign direct investment, FDI, foreign portfolio investment, FPI, and other sundry investments by mid-year 2020. Furthermore, there was also a decline in capital importation inflows by sector as all sectors recorded a downward slide. This is Business Express reaching you from Abuja. The program continues after this break. Let me assure Nigerians that all COVID-19 intervention funds are safe in the Treasury single account and that government is still open to donations in this regard. Government has opened special accounts with five commercial banks which are directly linked to the Treasury single account. Donated funds are safe in the Central Bank of Nigeria. For verifiable information about the funds and other financial obligations of the federal government, please contact us directly at the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. The account details for the donations are as follows.
Professor Uche Walike is a professor of capital markets and financial expert. He joins me for the business of the day as we focus on the drastic drop in capital importation in the second quarter of the year. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you very much. Well, Prof, Nigerians had barely recovered from the recent GDP figures yes. and here again the NBS has released importation data what is the scenario before us today well it's been grim grim uh, figures um, uh, all through um, just as you rightly said uh, we had the GDP figures um, that um, talks about the economy shrinking by 6.10 percent in the second quarter um, we've also uh, seen inflation figures um, as of last month uh, moving from 12.56 um, um, to 12.82%. And um, you also have um, Q2 of 2020 uh, unemployment figure released 27.1% unemployment rate, 28% uh, underemployment. So cumulatively, you have over 55%, you know, um, as a, a problem there. Shocking and, uh, and staggering figures. Yes, yeah, staggering figures. Um, purchasing managers index. Um, uh, well, we 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 not notice some improvement in uh, PMI, but in the Q in second quarter of 2020, it was also um, not too cheering. Uh, it was far far below uh, the indicative threshold of, of 50. So all of this, you know, um, combined to result in the in what what you, what you saw. And of course, the overarching factor responsible for all this uh, in my view is the covid yes um, the economy is still you know reeling from the impact of um, uh, covid med was ex exacerbated by the, the you know decline in oil price there is something to you know one has noticed that um, the capital importation into the country seems to fluctuate with um, the oil price performance so anytime we find oil price going up capital importation uh, in, you know rises and when it drops it also drops it happened in 2015 2015 uh, oil price was um, um uh, uh, you know 2014 2015 we had at about 1.500 dollars per barrel then when oil price fell in 2016 when we had a recession capital Im importation also fell and um at, at one point it was even under one one billion dollars what we saw second quarter of 2020 um, was as high as um, 1.29 that's what the mbs reported and you can compare that with what happened in 2016 second quarter of 2016 too was 1.04 you know so it oscillates with um, oil price performance and as i said covid 19 also contributed to what we saw the major sources of um, capital importation into the country uh, over the years you know has been the us and the UK. In fact, the UK is number one, and then the US. The US. But what, what are we seeing now? These countries are also facing recession. The UK just reported a recession of um, over 20% in Q2 of uh, 2020, US over 30%. So they're also having their own problems, let alone uh, you know, coming to invest in your, in your country. So the, w what is uh, playing out, as I said, is majorly the impact of, um, of COVID. Okay. Mm. COVID-19 is corporate. Nigeria is not alone. Like you've reported, the UK reported recession. It means investment into Nigeria is likely to reduce. Yes. But looking at these figures and looking at the third quarter, what is, this, what is the significance of these figures in looking at the economic outlook? Yes, I, I think... More so, more so that COVID-19 is still around. Yes, uh, COVID-19 is, is still around, but we, uh, we have also... Uh, we, are, we are also noting, you know... Um, uh, happily that uh, for Nigeria in particular and even for the world the, we are beginning to see some um, uh, flattening you know um, happening so I think the third quarter performance will be a, a lot better if you look at the the way this um, um, capital you know has come in you know, there are three components of it you have the FDI you have the other investments and you have the foreign portfolio invest investments now before now what what used to happen is our foreign portfolio investment used to be the the chunk of it but this time around, it's been displaced by other investments, uh, majorly loans. So you now have foreign portfolio investments, which are mainly investments in equities, investments in bonds, investments in money market, money market instruments. Okay, In the past, this used to be equities. But what we saw this time around was just um, money market instruments, uh, namely treasury bills, commercial paper, and so on. So as I said, it's majorly um, COVID. But the, the Q3 of... Um, 
um, you know, 2020, I see improvement. I see investors even doing uh, more of um, these equities, investors doing more of bonds, because we didn't see any bond at all, you know, investment in the second quarter of um, 2020, according to that report. Okay. And I also want to see going forward, a situation where foreign direct investment is um, uh, taking a um, prominence uh, because that is what really develops the country long term capital foreign portfolio is fluctuating is is quite short term so anytime there's a problem the investors will run away with their money and because the of the way they live it also hurts uh, external reserves and puts pressure on the on forex market so part of the pressure we are even seeing in the forex market today is because of a lot of foreign investors you know uh, are trying to exist because they also want to exchange uh, and leave but if it is the foreign direct investment type the one that comes to stay the one that creates empl employment that's the type that this country you know really needs but unfortunately over time we have had foreign direct investments you know coming in in trickles compared to countries like india indonesia malaysia that even south africa that receive a significant uh, capital inflows, you know, uh, with respect to um, foreign direct investments. Okay, Prof, we're witnessing three-quarter decline, three-quarter street. Aside COVID-19, are there other factors that are responsible for this, particularly to the Nigerian economy? Y yes, um, the truth of the matter is that <clears throat> any investor going into any country will be thinking, not just about uh, return on investment. What's my return on investment? Uh, the investor will also be concerned about country risk, country risk assessment, okay? Country risk assessment will include issues around the uh, security, will include issues that um, will also want to know the state of infrastructure, okay? So uh, I, I think if we have infrastructure, you know, rights, uh, particularly power, okay? That should also attract foreign investors. If we fix um, security, if they don't have any security concerns, that will also make them you know, come in. And if there's also clarity in the forex market, for example, uh, which I'm glad the central bank is doing now, trying to unify exchange rates, okay, they will also, you know, uh, come in. So these are some of the factors that investors, um, you know, look out for before they go in to invest in any country. And the, ma the macro um, ec economic pe uh, performance uh, is also important. Macroeconomic stability, uh, a situation where you have a, a country is having a rise in public debt, you know, having a lot of uh, fiscal imbalance, it also sends wrong signals to an investor because what you are thinking is uh, the country is borrowing so much, the country is highly levered. If, if you come in and there's a problem, okay, will you be able to take your money, take your money out? So these are some of the issues we should um, uh, address, you know, going forward. But I also think that um, the, even the issue of infrastructure, if we get other things right, particularly ease of doing business, okay, um, and, I'm, and I'm happy that this government is uh, doing a lot in that in that direction. We've been able to move up, um, you know, um, you know, some percentage points from where we were before. So if we continue along that path, fixing ease of doing business, investors will even see the infrastructure deficit as an opportunity to you know to come in and to invest. We want to see a lot of investments in in transport. We want to see a lot of investments in uh, power, and so on. So those are also opportunities for for uh, investors. Shortly before COVID-19 hit Nigeria and other countries had, we had uh, the president going around the globe, making some efforts at attracting foreign direct investment. We have promised by uh, the, the Russians for Ajakuta. Yeah. We have Saudi Aramco talking about uh, revitalizing uh, our refineries mm -hmm. and all of that. And even with COVID-19, we had mm -hmm some of those figures uh, coming in yeah. where did this little impact what do, do, we, do we have little, in what economy what part of so what sector of the economy did we have impact of this investment yes i would say we um in the area of um, transport transport infrastructure we've seen some appreciable With uh, the railway yes rail lines in particular uh, uh, appreciable um, you know improvements um, and even in the area of um, uh, power i understand a lot is um, happening uh, with the mambila um, you know power, 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 power project but for me uh, in terms of power i would work, i would like to see a situation where the emphasis is more on um, off grid solutions is more on um, renewable energy is more on solar for example, so that we de-emphasize the issue of um, having the uh, um, national grid. Uh, one important point I also want to make here is that for us to attract investments into the country, we need to 
uh, maybe revisit what the government has been talking about since 2016. The government has been, if you read our annual budgets every year, they talk about establishing special economic zones in all the um, zo you know, geopolitical zones in this country. But that hasn't happened. Okay, we need to have these special economic zones, you know, where you have um, infrastructure, you have incentives for investors to come and uh, invest. That, that way, uh, you, you, you know, st stand a good chance of attracting inv investors. And uh, talking about also the origin of this um, uh, investment, if you look at the United Nations Conference on Trade and, um, and, and, and Development, UNCTAD, UNCTAD report says a number of countries are well known, are very active in foreign direct investments, namely Singapore, you have Singapore, you have Japan, you have um, um, Netherlands, okay? These countries invest massively in other countries. In fact, Malaysia and Indonesia, the biggest source of their foreign direct investments are from these countries. So what we now need to do is to target these other these countries, okay? And uh, find a way yes, of, of reaching of, out of, of, to of them. them. Okay, to, Prof, to come in, to in, in a minute, looking at all these figures, can we have a reversal of this trend of this development before the end of the year? Do you see that happening? Yes. And I, if you see that happening, yes. what should be done to get that done? Yes, I see that. I see that happening. I see that happening because number one, I am optimistic that uh, the economy may not contract by as much as uh, IMF uh, has projected. I keep saying that IMF has projected 5.4 percent, you know, negative growth. I think we have seen the worst. We've seen the worst at 6.110 percent. Q3 of 2020 may, may not be as deep as contraction may not be as deep as what we saw there. And of course, you know, what we have for the half for half year, if you take the 1.87 we had positive in Q1 and 6.1, year on year is just about 2.10% negative drop. Okay, so I think that going forward, um, the, uh, as we re restart the economy, okay, uh, gradually, I think the economy, you know, will begin to pick up. And if it, if it picks up, prof, for example... I'm sure you are not just thinking, but yes. you are talking as a prophet. Yes. <laughs> being a professor of capital market and a financial expert. Yeah. Professor Uche Owaliki, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. And from what we've heard, there is hope. There is hope. At the end. Yes. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Yes. Moving on. As rainfall intensifies, flooding continues to wreak havoc to farmers in Sokoto, Zamfara, Kebi, and Niger states. The flooded water is said to be moving across more than 150 kilometers from Zamfara to empty into River Niger in Kebi and Niger states. Musa Baba Aliu has more. Two factors were said to be responsible for the flooding ravaging farming communities in Sokoto, Kebi, and Niger states. First is the level and frequent rainfall, which are beyond the earlier prediction. The second factor is this. The gradual release of water from the Goronyo Dam. This is a reservoir of water that contains about 900 and 84 million cubic meter, almost 1 billion. The water moved from here in Goronyo to River Niger after traveling for more than 700 kilometers. This water goes down to, to KB Niger State, Yanison. So it's what fed all the Adamas along, that, along the plain. The flood is from Arugungu here down to Suru to Kaoji. While on your right is from Arugungu up to Sokoto to Goranyu. Federal government and the Central Bank of Nigeria say farmers operating under Anchor Brewers program will be given a waiver in loan recovery. Farmers have invested nearing harvest time. They have met all the uh, necessary uh, activities from land clearing and clearing from other applications, everything. Just close to, that, to, to harvest time. We're experiencing this. An insurance premium that has been paid for every farmer that participated. So that also will help recoup whatever um, uh, losses. And also with the planting that they are going to plant as soon as the water is receding, the farmers will be able to come back to the business immediately. The assessment of the damages occasioned by flood continues. Despite disappointing data from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, investors at the Nigerian stock market managed to strudge off worry and move slowly upward. Let's join Bossy Abel for an outlook of the weekly performance.
The stock market report for week ended August 28, 2020 indicate that there was a total turnover of 1.072 billion shares worth 7.3 billion naira in 16,684 deals that were traded by investors last week on the floor of the exchange. The NSC All Share Index appreciated by 0.35% to close the week at 25,309.37 Business points, while market capitalization stood at 13.2 trillion naira. All other indices finished higher, with the exception of NSC Premium, NSC Banking, NSC AFI Devued, and NSC Merry Value indices, which depreciated, while the NSC ASM closed flat. The financial services industry led the activity chart with 586.7 million shares valued at 4 billion naira, traded in 8,483 deals. The conglomerate industry followed with 307.7 million shares worth 799.1 million naira in 1,010 deals. The third place was the consumer goods industry with a turnover of 50.1 million shares worth 968.2 million naira in 3,018 deals. Trading in the top three equities were Transnational Corporation of Nigeria PLC, UACN PLC and United Bank for Africa PLC. They jointly accounted for 396.3 million shares worth 1.3 billion naira in 1,845 deals. There was a total of 107,424 units of exchange traded products, ETPs, valued at 520.3 million naira that were traded in 18 deals. Also, a total of 8,285 units of federal government bonds valued at 10.6 million naira were traded last week in 15 deals. Thus, the stock market reports. Thank you, Bosede. Now the market resumed this morning with high expectation at the close of trade this Monday. The All Share Index inched upward by 0.07% to close the last day of August at 25,327.13 points. Market capitalization also rose to 13.221 trillion naira. 302 million equities swapped hands in 3,854 deals valued at 2.627 billion naira. UACN, Zenit Bank, and UBA led activities in volume terms. Global stocks also traded positive at the weekend, marking a fourth straight weekly rise as concerns over coronavirus wane, with governments around the world seeking out ways to insulate the global economy brought about by the virus. Indian's economy contracted by 23.9% in second quarter. But City Able again has been looking at the markets across the globe. Focus saw stock prices elevating despite the re encountered multiple increase in coronavirus infections in most countries. Stocks continued to climb as early results from a COVID 19 vaccine trial was reported. Investors remained confident even as various regional Federal Reserve presidents warned of a bumpy economic recovery. However, early trading in the last day of August saw Asia stocks mixed with Japan stocks leading gains among the region's major markets as investors monitored political developments in the country. Shanghai Composite was down 0.24% to 3,395.68. Hansen Index was 0.2%. 96% lower as of its final hour of trading, while Nikkei gained 1.12% to close at 23,139.76. U.S. stock futures rose Monday morning as traders appeared set to end the market's best August performance since the 1980s. This month's gains have pushed the S&P 500 to record levels, officially confirming a new bullish market has started. The Dow, meanwhile, erased
raised its 2020 losses on Friday, closing the session with a year-to-date gain 0.5% and Nasdaq 0.6%. European stocks were dovish as global market players were betting supportive monetary policy measures We continue to maintain stocks despite the economic damage of the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, in the UK, markets were closed Monday due to a bank holiday. In Africa, most stocks opened positive with Namibia's overall index, Tunisia's Tunidex, South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40, and Nairobi's All Share posting gains, while Ghana's GSE Composite was negative. Let's see how the international currency looks like. This is where we end this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter, and the handle is NTA News Now. Don't forget to use the hashtag, it's BizX. Remember to intermittently wash your hands with soap under running water and stay safe. Business Express returns Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. on the network service of the NTA.